trainers may be turning to treadmill running at home now more than ever because gyms are consistently closing and now winter is here and not every runner enjoys running out in the snowy cold. So treadmill running it is for a lot of runners. One thing to keep front of mind is a running shoe type may profoundly influence foot strike mechanics and leg swing mechanics when running on a treadmill whereby thickly cushioned high heeled running shoes could prove problematic as compared with flat minimalist running shoes or even with running barefoot. Research in the 2014 European Journal of Applied Physiology, which is linked down below this video in the description box, has shown that runners may run better on a treadmill while barefoot or in zero drop minimalist running shoes as compared with conventional running shoes with a thicker outsole or more of a heel to toe differential. The researchers examined the effects of different running shoe heel to toe drop levels of zero millimeters, four millimeters and eight millimeters and running barefoot. They looked at how these four running conditions influence foot, ankle and knee mechanics during treadmill running. The researchers found that the runners who ran barefoot or in zero drop minimalist running shoes on the treadmill displayed the largest improvements in mechanical safeness because these runners engaged more low impact and therefore more functional foot strike and leg swing mechanics as compared with the runners in the standard running shoe with an eight millimeter heel to toe differential. More specifically, the outcome difference was largely because the barefoot runners and the zero drop minimalist running shoe runners landed with a forefoot strike that involved less rapid ankle dorsiflexion at touchdown. This means that upon it at touchdown, the front of the foot didn't wind back really far and then smack down onto the treadmill, but rather these runners showed less of a forefoot lift prior to touchdown, and so there was less forefoot smacking. What's the functional relevance of this? Less ankle dorsiflexion or less forefoot lift at touchdown when running produces a smoother sliding placement of the foot with the surface, and there is less jolt force on the foot. With that done, there may also be reduced inner range contractions of the shin muscles and therefore may reduce the risk of shin splints. And I reported on that research and my article on it is linked down below the video in the description box. The barefoot and zero drop minimalist running shoe runners also had greater knee flexion at touchdown, which means the knee was more bent at touchdown. The functional significance of increased knee flexion at landing when running is it essentially breaks the flow of high impact because it improves the positioning of the foot at landing such that the foot now lands closer to the center of mass which is the upper body when the foot touches down closer to the center of mass when running which is made possible easily by bending your knee at touchdown this enables the body to spend less time in the brake phase whereby reduced braking at touchdown prevents high compressive loads from being produced it may also have an economical relevance in that decreases in braking when running may increase the forward momentum of the center of mass and from this less muscular energy may be needed to thrust the body forward into the next step but why did the barefoot runners and the zero drop minimalist shoe runners engage greater knee flexion at touchdown than the runners in the thick cushioned running shoes it turns out that Running in the absence of underfoot cushioning, there is now a wide range of underfoot sensory inputs and sensory cues that activate deep, fast acting reflexes, which set in motion what is called avoidance behavior protection. This term was coined by barefoot running expert, Dr. Steven Robbins, and the link to his work is also down below the video in the description box. The avoidance behavior protection reflex when running includes decreases in ankle dorsiflexion at landing and increases in knee flexion at landing. These two mechanical parameters are always consistently engaged in habitual barefoot runners as well as shod or shoe runners who run barefoot for the first time. The main purpose of this reflex is to provide a reliable basis for low impact running in the absence of underfoot cushioning. Such modifications in mechanics when barefoot means our neuromuscular and reflexive system can provide its own set of natural protections against high impacts. However, 
The same reflexive protective effect is not always seen in runners in thick cushion running shoes. In fact, evidence from Dr. Robbins has shown that increases in underfoot cushioning consistently correlated with more impact produced at landing regardless of foot strike pattern when running on account of the avoidance behavior protection reflex is really more offline because there's very little sensory input for the reflex to respond and in consequence the foot actually ends up rushing down to the ground with more downward force which isn't always ideal for preventing impact related injuries and by extension everywhere you look it's as if a runner is getting injured despite all the advancements in running shoe technology clearly Thick cushion running shoes really don't always work for injury prevention. Of course, there are countless variables that give rise to running related injuries, but one inescapable correlation is the number of running injuries continue to move upwards even though running shoes have gotten thicker in underfoot cushioning. To this point, the study also found that the barefoot runners and the zero drop minimalist shoe runners had reduced loading and transient impact peaks when treadmill running. Reduced impact peaks mean there was less burst of high impact and that impact was really far from exceeding tolerance as compared with the eight millimeter cushioned running shoe group. This suggests that increases in underfoot cushioning does not always consistently prevent high impacts when running, whereas wearing less on the feet or running barefoot on the treadmill or even over ground adds more underfoot stimulus for enhanced neuromuscular response in engaging mechanical adjustments to avoid high impact. To that end, the study also found that barefoot running on the treadmill had the greatest effects on ground contact time, whereby the barefoot runners had less stance phase duration as compared to the standard shod runners. This means that in the barefoot treadmill running condition, the feet spent more time in flight or in the air and less time on the moving belt. And by extension, duration of foot ground contact time when running affects impact production and impact intensity whereby the shorter the ground contact time of the foot can result in an exchange of the foot with the ground that's so brief that certain impact force variables are not fully produced or even produced at all. It's also worth noting that some runners in general report that they feel very unsteady when they run on a treadmill. This unsteady unbalanced sensation when treadmill running may be compounded or made worse when running an issue that's incredibly thick and underfoot cushioning and this cushioning is very squishy and compressible. This is all the more reason that barefoot running or running in flat thinner minimalist running shoes may help you run more stable on the treadmill given the way wearing less on the feet involves our neuromuscular system making more functional use out of a number of the different under foot sensory inputs that activate a level of balance control, body position sense, and footstep stability which get diminished in thickly cushioned running shoes. Ultimately, these findings support a particular view of what makes for an effective way in improving running form and developing mechanics that really sustain well long term, adding barefoot running or running in zero drop minimalist running shoes to your training, especially when running on a treadmill, may not only help you run more safe and controlled on the treadmill, but at the same time can certainly make your neuromuscular memory better at keeping your mechanics in a safer range and better at preventing false sensations of movement for if you choose to do road races in conventional running shoes or run a sloppy trail race where thicker tread may be needed. In both these cases, there isn't a good amount of sensory input flowing through the foot. You're not really armed with the right amount of feedback, but with more barefoot running experience, the more it makes it easier for you to uphold low impact functional mechanics that are very similar to runners like Eliab Kipchoge, Haley Gabriel Selassie, and Turnish Dababa, who are all on record for saying that they mostly ran barefoot daily all throughout childhood until around 16 years of age. And if you look at how they run now in running shoes, they really execute strikingly similar foot strike, ankle, knee, and hip mechanics to that of habitual barefoot runners. And a lot of that has to do with running barefoot during critical stages of 
development where neuromuscular development is quite high, the mechanical outputs of running barefoot get deeply hardwired in the neuromuscular memory, which I think has helped played somewhat of a supporting role in their outstanding achievements as endurance runners today. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already, where you will stay more informed on heel strike running versus forfeit strike running. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.